Y'all have been waiting a long time for this. Now it's here. Hi, I'm Eric. I film my phone and welcome to another video. Today we are listening to Alanis Morissette's 2002 album Under a Rug Swept. This is the first time I've listened to this project. A lot of y'all were interested. When I created the, these reactions, if you had told me that Alanis Morissette would have been the artist I reacted to multiple times first, I wouldn't have believed you. And then that that second reaction would be my most popular video now, my most liked, my most commented, just everything and a large creation of what my now subscription base is. I would not have believed you. I was really shocked that so many people were interested in a reaction to an album that came out in 1998. Like, that's wild. And maybe it's because it was the first reaction on YouTube for supposed former infatuation junkie. And this will be the first reaction video to Under Rug Swept, unless while I'm filming or editing this, that no longer is the case. But for now, it will be. And I'm really excited to see what she has up her sleeve now. We're into the 21st century now, the time where I'm like three years old. So I was alive when this album came out. I did not listen to it because I was three. I am really excited about it. This is part two in my Daniel Mello trilogy of videos that he uh, recommended that I listen to. However, after the first one, y'all were very excited about Under Accept. And so here, I'm just gonna point around the screen and other boxes will pop up. Boom, boom, boom. No, I cannot do picture in picture multiple times. I apologize. Also, I will be getting to all of your album reaction suggestions. I'm very excited about all of them. They will take time just because I'm now in class and there are some long albums that y'all recommended and I'm really excited to get to them. But especially with these very lyrically dense ones, I definitely have to give myself the right headspace for it. So I don't want to be like, oh, I'm going to be reacting all the time to all of these reactions lickety split. So be patient, they're on their way, don't worry. Also, this reaction is a little different cause your boy does have a laptop with me before y'all were being held up on the laptop screen. Now that you are on my cabinet thing, I can now use my computer to look at lyrics. A lot of y'all were like, you didn't get the lyrics. And I was like, yeah, I know I couldn't. It would have been tacky for me to literally be like so zoomed in on the camera. And it would just been weird to edit. Like, I'm glad that I can just like look down and, you know, figure out everything. That being said, I don't want to be the person who's just lyrically analyzing it for you. I'm going to be getting most of these lyrics off of Genius Lyrics, so you can just literally look there if you actually just want the meaning of the song. However, I'm going to be looking up lines that stick out to me or lines that I didn't quite catch that I really wanted to catch, just so I feel like I have more of a grasp on this album than I did with the previous one. I cannot think of what any song on this album sounds like. I have heard a couple of them from when I went to go see Jagged Little Pill on Broadway, an amazing experience. Hopefully other people will get to experience that sometime soon. So songs like Hands Clean and So Unsexy, I know maybe a little bit about what they sound like, but I've only heard it on Broadway and it was in, within the context of the actual show. It wasn't like, oh, I'm listening to the soundtrack or anything. So. Those will still be very much a reaction. With all that being said, let's get into it. Track number one, 21 Things I Want in a Lover. Oh, already starting very rock heavy. This feels more Jagged Little Pill than Infatuation Junkie. Okay, she's letting you know that they're just things that she wants in a lover. They don't have to be what you have. Her delivery is so unique. I mean, it's something I praise on every album of hers. She doesn't sound like anyone else. I feel like I can describe it I have a choice in the matter. Yeah, empowerment. 
Okay. Choice in the matter. I love that line. Probably my favorite, at least before I even read the lyrics. Ooh. I like how she ended that. So that was 21 Things I Want in a Lover. And wow, that's a good tone setter for this album. Like, she's basically just listing all the qualities that she wants in a lover. Like, she wants them to have intellectual capacity, but know that that doesn't mean they're wise, that they should be both masculine and feminine, not believe in capital punishment. So there's like some things that are much more concrete, like, oh, don't believe this, be this kind of person. And then there's the more complex or abstract philosophical thing of like driving joy when someone else succeeds. So there's definitely like a nice balance of it. And I like it because it is a very confessional type of song, which Alina is obviously known for. It made me think a lot more of Jagged Little Pill in terms of just the lyric writing alone. A lot of Jagged Little Pill is very list format, like not the doctor I think of, versus like supposed former infatuation junkie. I felt like got a lot of its meaning from repetition. This song is a nice way to set the album up, and I'm ready to hear more. Track number two, Narcissist. Ooh, I like that transition. Ooh, writing a letter to a narcissistic boy. Ooh, I like that internal rhyming. That was great. Ooh, I like this filtering. It was on the end of 21 Things I Want in a Lover. And it's a really cool sound to operate with him. You never had to suffer any consequences. We know those kinds of people. A popular boy. Calling him out. Oh, all the talk of being selfless makes them run away. They're only thinking about themselves. Did she say what I thought she just said? Uh, did you hate dealing with someone that you care about or have feelings for, but they're literally only thinking about themselves. It sucks. Both feet in, commitment. Yeah, they ain't about that. I think she said what I thought she said. Oh, that's it. So that was Narcissus and ooh, we love a little bit of anger and angst in it. I liked this one. It was fun because I like a lot of the playfulness that she used. It's clearly about a boy who literally only thinks about himself and is really focused on his own image and his own life and not anyone else's. And he's like, he thinks he's that guy and he's really not because no one's really that guy, you know? Like, we're all in this together. <laughs> After combing the lyrics, wow, she really likes to mention about how people like to um, lick his behind. And, you know, good for her. That was a little weird of a line for me to deal with, but I understand what the message is about it. I like the employment of, oh, you're not a narcissist, you are a narcissist. That's just how egotistical you are. You're not the person that is derived from that, that figure in mythology. You are that figure because, which I think dramatizes the situation, but I think for songwriting, like that's what you gotta do. And one line that I read was, you've never been with anyone who like dares to call you up on it and like, you know, tell you that you're full of it. And I was like, yeah, they really like yes people, you know, yes men and yes women and yes people. Also, Genius also told me that in the course, it was like, why do I try to help you try to help you? And that there's that repetition. 
That might be because in the myth, Echo was the one who was really interested in Narcissus. And her fate is where we get the word echo, which, you know, we're rep repeating things again. But I like that clever academic touch. It was nice. Track number three is Hands Clean. And I think this is a single. I think I saw that there was a music video online. And when I go on to Genius Lyrics, it's like a lot of people have looked at it, like comparatively, because it doesn't show anyone for other ones. Also, this is the first song that's over four minutes. And every song following this will also be over four minutes. So she really started us off with a couple shorter ones just so that we can get prepared for some more longer songs on our journey. She already sounds like she's about to cry. Ooh, I like that percussion just coming in. Oh, I like how that whole production just came in. Sounds really good. Oh, I like how she's projecting and it works really well with the production. You wash your hands clean of this. It's kind of a, another follow up of like you ought to know. Like you're not my responsibility anymore. You even know it's the cross I bear that you gave to me. Supposed crime. Is what she did a little scandalous? Oh, sounds like it might be some sort of affair or DL relationship. Oh, she's just an under accept. Album title. Bless. I have honored your request for silence and you have washed your hands clean. So it sounds like he's trying to leave everything in the past, but she still wants to all hold on. No, emotional, but still nice. So that was hands clean. Okay, I just looked up lyrics. I feel a little incorrect. So like, I was right that there is a secret, there is an illicit affair happening. And that's the thing about illicit affairs. Sorry, didn't mean to folklore all of y'all Alanis fans. But I didn't realize that a lot of the verses are from the man's perspective, just because I really couldn't hear it with the production originally. It's much more about, hey, you better not tell anyone. And there's definitely an age power dynamic. It's a yikes moment because it sounds like that guy is also in the music industry and was gonna try to take like credit for Alanis becoming the amazing star that she is today. I don't know who that man is. Maybe some people knew who he was. I don't, so I think Elena's kind of won in the end. But still, it sucks feeling like you can't tell anyone about your life. Apparently, she might have even been a minor when it happened. So, you know, when they say it's a supposed crime, it's not necessarily just adultery. It's like, like rape of a child. Not great like not in the least bit and i mean it's abusive frankly like him wielding that influence and i'm glad that she's airing out that experience in her life and making it so it's not just swept under the rug because she's confronting that because there's a lot of trauma in that and so very glad that she's bringing that out into the open, hopefully on her terms. And, you know, letting people know, like, this person's bad. I wonder, obviously, I was like three at this time of this record coming out, but I wonder if this song actually led to having consequences for this person's actions. Sonically, I really enjoy it. Again, she has this cool rock and has this cool percussive feel. And I'm just a big fan of all that. I really am. It's a lovely time. Track number four is Flinch, which is just over six minutes. So it'll be a journey, but I'm ready for it. Oh, it feels like we're gonna relax and chill. Maybe the lyrics won't be chill, but the sonics will be. Ooh. 
lovely harmony there. Yes. Did she say what I think she just said? How long before my dignity is reclaimed? I'm concerned. How long can a girl be tortured by you? How long can a girl be tortured by you? Yikes. Soon I'll grow up and I won't even flinch at your name. Soon I'll grow up and I won't even flinch at your name. So that was flinch and wow. I kind of felt that one. It feels somewhat like a follow-up to Hands Clean, albeit less immediate yikes. It really is a vibe. I like that the production's a little more stripped back and I can hear a lot more of the vocals on it. I did realize I didn't hear some lyrics right. It's, you affect me like you are my dad. Thank goodness the song really is about how you had a negative experience with someone or maybe it was a bittersweet experience. And all those experiences, like, they're not gonna happen again, but like, if you see that person, they're still affecting you. And for her, she says at the beginning, what it, what has it been, like a decade? I was like, yikes, <laughs> someone who had experiences that are much more recent than a decade, if I'm still thinking about them in a decade, uh, yikes. It probably attributes to her being very young at the time when it happened originally. And yeah, I hope that day where she won't even flinch at his name has come. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. It didn't feel like it was six minutes. I felt like it was like a nice four. There was an outro that like didn't need to happen, but I was like chill with it happening. It's a vibe still. Still enjoying it. Track number five is So Unsexy. I remember this one was also in Jagged Little Pill. I think Hands Clean, that makes sense that that song is in that musical, given what we know what happens in the musical. But I don't exactly remember what So Unsexy is about. I think it's about the parents, if I remember right. Ooh, back to some early 2000s rock. Oh, I like how that came in right like that. She's 13 for good. Wow. She definitely had a lot of traumatic experiences when she was younger. And that still has continued to affect her. Ooh. I like how she's projecting here. I like production here. It's a lovely chorus. One forgotten phone call, I'm deflated. If that ain't me, <laughs> your hand pulling away and I'm devastated. Me. You feel so boring for someone so interesting. It's just because you know yourself well. Like you're not interesting to yourself sometimes, but you'll find someone who finds you interesting because you are. I like this outro here. This song sounds like sunshine, even though the song isn't entirely happy. It just gives off a summer vibe. So that was so unsexy and I really enjoyed the song. It was nice. I mean, it's a lot to deal with. Just, you know, having all those little rejections and ways that you project how you feel about yourself on how you think other people feel about you when they probably don't have a really negative perspective on you. After reading some lyrics, I think it's not necessarily as much about someone so beautiful is another person. I think it is, oh, I feel unsexy even though I know deep down that I am that chick. Yeah, it's a, just about low self-esteem, I think. Just vibing with 
you know, those insecurities. Overall, really enjoyed the song. Sonically, sounds fun. Lyrically, it's relatable content. I'll take it. Track number six is Precious Illusions. Oh, she just singing at the very beginning. You'll realize the gem I am. You are a gem, Alanis. Never forget that. Oh, I like the production and her singing here. This album has a nice mix of her vocals being super beautiful and the production being super good as well. The song sounds a little like I was hoping. Not content-wise at all, just gives me a similar color. So that was Precious Illusions, and I liked it. I lost the plot partially through, so lyrics helping me right now. The first line, you'll rescue me, right? In the exact same way they never did. Poetry. Wow. That line's gonna stick with me for a long time. I just know it. Ooh. But the precious illusions that she's talking about are the ways in which she could find happiness or meaning in life. And they're illusions because she has to make meaning for herself. And this song is about coming to that realization. It's a really impactful song because it's a realization we all come to at some point that we have to grow up, I guess, and realize that a lot of the work comes from ourselves. And that's liberating in a sense because you don't have to wait for the perfect person to come along. You don't have to find the miracle drug. And that's nice because you don't have to search. You have to search within yourself, which, you know, is a contained body. At least I think that's a really cool revelation to make. Sonically, I really enjoyed it. It reminded me a lot of supposed former infatuation junkie, but then also with some elements of such pretty forks. This album obviously came out between the two, so it shows that evolution really nicely. Track number seven is That Particular Time. I have a feeling this song is gonna have a lot of tea in it, just by that title alone. Ooh, we're stripping back to for some strong lyrical content. This isn't the tea I thought it would be. Obviously she's referring to a very specific experience that particular time, but I'm not quite getting exactly what this time is fully about. Oh, project. That particular time, I'm staying with you and deserting me. So that was that particular time, and I have to say, I lost a lot of the plot while I was listening, so I did look up some lyrics, and that section is probably pretty short because I had lost that plot. Also, um, the people in my hallway are being rather loud, and I would have to edit probably like an hour worth of content out because just literally them messing with takes. If my mood feels kind of wonky, that's the reason. It's not a reason with this album. I am thoroughly enjoying the work so far. But wow, the song is very sad because it originally is like, I'm not gonna leave. And the second part is about, oh, we need to take a break to figure out us. And then the third part is, I think them coming back together. And then she's like, if I stayed with you, it means I'm deserting myself which is not what I thought it was. I thought it was, oh, I need to stay with you and leave me. But that didn't make a whole lot of sense considering that she was trying not to desert herself in some earlier songs. I messed up there. I think the song is really powerful. I think I definitely need to re-listen to it now that I understand more of the context of it. There was a lot of distractions externally, so my reaction wasn't as polished as it could have been. Track number eight is A Man. Ugh, you don't need one of those. Oh, this feels like it has a little bit of Latin influence. I have been blamed and I have repented. That doesn't mean she did it though. Oh. I like the insertion of the electric guitar there. Yeah. Let's get into that crunch. 
I have been shamed and I have relented. She's changed herself to fit the mold of others. I'm glad she's releasing herself from that mold. She deserves it. Oh, classic Elena's vocals here. I'm trying to figure out if she's creating a perspective from a man or if she's comparing herself to one. This sounds sonically a little like Would Not Come. Also sounds a little like Can't Not. Very much of the junkie track. Classy fade out. All right. So that was a man, and sonically, I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was a good track. I compared it to some of the tracks on Infatuation Junkie, and it's good. Like, those were good songs. This is a good song. I really enjoyed it. Lyrically, I'm gonna need help with this one. I'm gonna phone a friend. Y'all are the friend. I'm phoning you. Let me know what this song is about. I just read all the lyrics really quickly. There are no notations on it and there were no like keywords, I guess, that I could find about what this is about. Maybe something about like criminal justice. That's like as close as I'm getting. I don't know if it's about feminism. I'm, I'm really confused, honestly, y'all. So please help. <laughs> but sonically, thoroughly enjoy it. Definitely a song. I think I'm gonna like. Track number nine is You Owe Me Nothing in Return. This kind of feels a little disco-y a little bit. Oh, I like the muffling. I wonder if this song is to a future kid or if this is to a lover. Cause I feel like my opinion on the song changes about whether or not it's one of those. Love someone else, then I'll support it. If it's a lover, like, red flag. This is the only love that I think that there is. This very unconditional love. Nothing for caring the way that I have. I give you thanks for receiving. It's my privilege. Wow. Very generous. The way she ends that chorus, you owe me nothing in return. For some reason it makes me feel like there's a mysterious vibe to it. Even though I don't really see how that fits in the song. So that was it, you owe me nothing in return. And it's about a sort of love where you care about someone and what they want. Like that's what you want is what they want. And it's unconditional. And she mentioned, apparently at some point, that it's not necessarily at the cost of sacrificing yourself. It's just being selfless with your love. And I don't know, like, is that something I can expect that two people can really have in 2020? Maybe that's a little pessimistic of me, but you know, it's a very ideal state where someone wouldn't take advantage of that. And especially someone for Alanis Morissette, who according to her own songs has been taken advantage of several times, still aspiring to that level is very inspirational to me personally, that she would still try to go for that level. I don't know how I feel about the song. Track number 10 is Surrendering. If that's what you call it, Sorry, such pretty forks. Oh, just boom right in there. This song sounds happy. I'm amazed by your surrender. Interesting. Oh, I like how that built up. Oh, is she ending with this filter again? So that was surrendering. And honestly, what a heartwarming song. I just looked at the lyrics and it's jumping into a relationship, not fearless, but in spite of your fears, just allowing yourself to be loved. And she's telling her partner, hey, I'm glad that you're doing that. I appreciate you allowing yourself to be loved by me. And it's a happy track. 
which we don't get a lot from Alanis, so I'll take it when I can get it. Sonically, I enjoyed the song thoroughly. I think it's probably gonna be one of my favorites. Track number 11, last track on this album, is Utopia. Wow, we are already here. It feels like it's taken a lot longer than only 10 tracks to get to this last track. Maybe it's just the external factors, or maybe it's a little getting a little hot in here and stuffy, and my back's in crippled and pain, but we're good, don't worry about me. We're gonna push through. Oh, I like that percussion. Sounds like a clipping sound. Oh, that little French there. Oh, I didn't think we were gonna go in that direction. Her voice is so delicate here. I forget that it can do that. I feel like we're kind of building with these lyrics here. I like it. So. Yeah. Her voice makes me think of butterflies here. It's really beautiful. What a way to end an album. So that was Utopia, and it was very pretty. Like, it definitely had that slow afternoon, springtime feel to it. I feel like this album is a very spring album. When did it come out? Okay, it came out in late February, so kind of a winter album, technically. But, you know, it's out right in time for spring. So I'm gonna take that. Yeah, a very chill song to end the album. I don't think it stands at least sonically as a very big statement. It feels lyrically a little more of a statement saying, yo, a utopia would be where we talk, we could disagree, and we wouldn't lie to each other about how we feel. We'd be very sincere, but we're not judging each other for that. That's an interesting version of a utopia. I mean, that sounds like a nice world to me. Good luck, Alanis, getting that to happen, but like, you know, that's what it is, a utopia. It's what we can aspire to. I guess a lot of this album's a little bit more of what we hope to be versus what we actually are. With all that, we have finished this album, and this album's very different than the other three that I've listened to by Alanis. That would be Jagged Little Pill, Supposed former infatuation junkie and such pretty forks in the road. This one doesn't have as many like what I classify as bangers, but I don't really think they were called that in the late nineties. There's not anything here that I would classify as a radio hit or a perspective radio hit. I know only a couple of songs on here were singles. But like even still, like those songs are like long compared to like what's normally accepted on the radio. And yeah, it was just less hard hitting. Like the things that would hit you hard would be very subtle, if that makes sense. And that's, I guess, why it's important to pay attention to the lyrics. I also feel like the album evolved over time. Like I feel like the first half had a lot more straightforward stuff like back with like Narcissist and 21 Things I Want in a Lover. Like those songs feel very different than Utopia or Surrendering. Like they're just very different. I don't mean that to be that the album's not cohesive. I think I just need to listen to it more when I have a clearer head, uh, less stressed, just vibing to the songs that are playing. I think overall it is a good album. I think I'll like it overall. I don't know how it compares to other Alanis Morissette albums. I don't even know what songs I necessarily like on it. I think this reaction I'm a little speechless and at a loss for words about what I think of each song. But I guess without further ado, here are my favorites. So top tier are songs I really like. Definitely, definitely like. Songs in the middle are songs that I like. I added them to my playlist. They're just not as standout as the top. And then tracks at the bottom are just not really my thing. Doesn't mean they can't be your thing. Doesn't mean they're a bad song. They're just not for me. I think overall I did enjoy it. I'm really excited to hear more albums from her and react to them for y'all. And I'm really excited to listen to the other artists that you have suggested since you saw how much I liked her previous projects. If you want to keep recommendations coming, I will ideally get to all of them. It may be a little bit of time just because 
I have other things that I have to work on now, as well as I got a lot of recommendations. So I have to factor all that in and make sure I kind of diversify, especially with things that are very lyrically dense, like Elena Morissette projects. I like to give myself some time to digest the work more fully before I would, you know, just jump into the next album from her. So it may be a bit, but you know, if you subscribe, you'll see my notifications. You'll see when the video is posted, you'll get really excited and you'll watch it and you'll share it with your friends. If you have any recommendations, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I also have a spreadsheet down in the description box that lists every album that I've ranked. So you can see what I've listened to before. So if you want to re-listen to any of those projects, you can get that. If you like this video, please like it. Please comment down below that you'd like me to react or listen to next. Please subscribe to my channel if you're not already and you'd like to be. And thanks for watching. This is Charles Stormer. Catch you later. It's storming turtles from out of the sky. Turtles don't need to know why. Smile big, open your eyes. It's storming turtles, it's storming turtles from out of the sky. Turtles don't need to know why. Smile big, open your eyes.